All right, David Kane here with another question from your Hayes and Harris Math SL textbook. This is exercise 10K, questions 2, parts B and E. And uh, hang in there because I picked some, some tough questions for this one. Uh, this might take a little while. Um, in fact, I might even split it into two parts. So we'll start with, with part B. Um, we want to solve this equation, which means we want to solve this for x. That means we either, either need to cancel or combine these two expressions. At first, it looks like they're both cosines, so it's just 4 cosine of x. But be careful, this is 2x. This is a double angle. So these two terms are not really like terms. They don't share uh, an element. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to use the double angle theorem to eliminate this cosine of 2x. Remember that cosine of 2x is equal, is equal to many things, but one of them is 2 cosine squared of x take 1. Now why did I choose this one and not the other two uh, possibilities? The other two possibilities are 1 take 2 sine squared of x and uh, cosine squared of x take sine squared of x. So why do I choose this one? Well it's because looking at this equation I have a cosine of x. That's going to give me something to combine together cosine of x and cosine squared of x. I might be able to get them to work together. Cosine of x and sine of x are harder to get to work together. There are fewer ways to combine them. And this equation is just the worst of the, the three because it has all of the problems here with all of the problems here together. So my best bet, I think, is to have as many similarities between what I insert to what exists already in the equation. So if I take cosine of 2x plus 3 cosine of x is equal to 1, I'm going to replace this with this. And that gives me 2 cosine squared of x take 1 plus 3 cosine of x is equal to 1. Now did that help me? Well I think it did because what it gave me is a quadratic. I have a squared term, a term to the first power, and some assorted terms to the zero power, some assorted constant terms, which I can combine together. So let's rearrange this and solve it for zero. We'll get 2 cosine squared of x plus 3 cosine of x, negative 1, and I'll bring the other one over, so negative 1 subtract 1, is negative 2, and that's equal to zero. So hopefully this is something I can factorize. Let's give it a shot. If I have 2 cosine squared of x, if this is going to factorize cleanly, there's not many options. It's going to be 2 and 1. So 2 cosine of x and cosine of x. Again, I have 2, so my options are 2 and 1. Uh, one of them has to be negative, but I want a positive result, and I want a large positive result. So that means I want to multiply this positive 2 by a positive 2 over here. That leaves a negative 1 on this side. Let's double check, see if this works. Negative 1 times positive 2 is negative 2. Positive 2 times positive 1 is positive 2. Positive 2 times positive 2 is positive 4. But negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. Positive 4 take 1 is 3. I think we'll be okay. Okay, now what we have are two terms. There's one term here and one term here. Well, two expressions. And they're multiplied together to give me 0. This means I can take advantage of the null factor law, which says that if two things are multiplied together to give me 0, then one or both must be 0. That means that 2 cosine of x take 1 has to be 0, and or cosine of x plus 2 has to be equal to 0. This allows me to separate them into two equations that are each solvable for x. I'll subtract 2 to the other side and I'll get cosine of x is equal to 2, negative 2. I'll subtract, or I'll add the 1 to the other side and divide by 2. That tells me that cosine of x is equal to 1 on 2, 1 half. Now I can solve each of these equations for x, but I notice over here that cosine of x is equal to negative 2, but I know that trigonometric functions sine and cosine are the vertical and horizontal components of the angle on the unit circle. They're never anything other than numbers between negative 1 and positive 1. They're never bigger than that. 
So there are no solutions here. There's no value of x I can plug in that'll give me negative 2. Different story over here. Different story over here. Cosine of x is equal to 1 half. I'm going to draw out the unit circle, and that'll help me pick my values. If cosine of x is equal to 1 half, that means I'm going halfway out on the unit circle. So all the way out is 1, halfway out is half. I'm looking for angles that have this horizontal component. One of them is here, and the other one is here. Now remember that x has to be between 0 and 2 pi. That's what was given to me at the very beginning of the question, all the way up here. So there aren't infinite solutions to this question. There's just the first rotation, which is pi on 3, and this first rotation out to here, which is 5 pi on 3. I can't keep going around and around because I'm limited to one positive rotation. I think I'll pause it here start another video for part two. I'll see you there.